Father God in heavens, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we come. God, we honor you today. We magnify you. God, we call on your son, Jesus. For he is worthy of all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. God, we thank you for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity. Just to come in your presence, Father God, to do nothing but say thank you. Lord, we thank you again for another moment to worship you. We thank you again for another place to worship you. We thank you, Father God, for keeping us the last six weeks, Father. God, you blessed us and you kept us. God, you've been our master. God, you've been our Lord. God, you are our deliverer. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for a place where we can lift up our hands. A place that we can do our dance. A place, Father God, where we can praise you and honor you. We thank you for this place, Father God. That place that you call your house of prayer. That we can lift our prayer voices to you. We can lift our voices in praise and glorifying you. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for electricity. We thank you, Father God, for lights. We thank you for air conditioning. We thank you, Father God, for another privilege to come to your designated place, the place we call church, the place you call home, the place of prayer. And we thank you for it, Father. We thank you for this house of prayer. We thank you, Lord, for those who have come. We thank you for those who are listening. We thank you for the atmosphere we call church. God, we honor you today, Father God. Lord, we messed up. God, we've fallen short. Our sins are ever before us. But God, you have forgiven us. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for forgiving our sins as we confess them, Father God. You forgive us and we thank you. Lord, we thank you for every person who has given to this call that we will enter this place one more again. We thank you for every pastor. We thank you for every church. We thank you for every visitor. We thank you for every corporation. We thank you for every individual. And we thank you for every member that gives with a cheerful heart. That gives, Father God, with, with a heart of, of thanksgiving. And for that, we thank you. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us in this place. Bless us to glorify you. Bless us to lift you. Bless us to be content with you, Father God, and look forward to hearing from no other God. Now, Lord, we ask you to speak to us. Bless us, Father God, that we will move as only you ask us to move, that we will honor you and glorify your name. And, Lord, we'll be careful now to give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. It's in the mighty, mighty, mighty name and the strength of Jesus the Christ we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen and Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord.
Jesus. Jesus the Christ, he is worthy. He is worthy. There is none like him. He is worthy of all the praise and all the glory. Let me call your attention to Psalm 117. Since we're back in our building, I want to preach all of it today. I just feel like preaching it all today. Don't go to sleep. Don't pass out. Psalm 117. I want to preach every last one of it. Every word of it. Is that all right with you if I preach it all today? It's all right? Psalm 117. Sister so Hughes says, all right if I preach it all. Psalm 117, verses 1 and 2. So Sister Whitlaw shaking her head said, don't preach it all. I only ask one question. She starts shaking her head. Oh, Lord. She probably said some other things like that old man there. Psalm 117, verses 1 and 2. When you found it, you will discover these words. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Laugh him, all you people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to talk about praise the Lord. All right. Praise the Lord. Many times we fall into trials and tribulations. And those trials and tribulations are just to make us strong. Many times we fall into situations that we really won't, don't want to be a part of. But we have to understand that God is behind the scenes making things happen in our behalf. Paul says in Romans that, and we know, Romans 8 and 28, he says, and or for we know that all things work together for the good to those who love the Lord and to those who are called according to his purpose. We know that we are to lay our burdens upon the Lord for the Lord cares for us. We know that we ought to be ready at any given moment to give an answer of the hope that lies within us. We know that every now and then we will fall into divers temptation. But God gives us a way out of all of them. The Bible teaches that when we are tempted, God performs an avenue and gives us a place in an avenue for escape. We know that the God we serve is such an awesome God until he's never late, he's always on time. Whether we realize it or not, God has been with us even the last five to six weeks. It seems like the devil 
is having its way. It looks as if every time we get financially ahead, then the devil tries to pull us financially back. But his word keeps coming to me. And his word says, even these things will work out for the good. You have to continue to be the one who loved the Lord and continue to know that he's called you for such a time as this. We understand, the New Beginning Church understand that troubles will always be available. Troubles will always be lurking. Trouble will always try to tear us apart. But we serve a God, as Jesus said to Peter, the devil has asked for you. The devil wants to sift you as sifting wheat. But be a good cheer. I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. Jesus says that the world will offer you tribulation. But be excited. Be of good cheer that I have overcome the world. Over 1,000 promises, many more promises that the Bible has given to us that we seem to forget when we're in the midst of trouble. I want to tell you, we as the Israelites sometimes are traveling through the wilderness, but the God we serve will always keep us regardless of what goes on around us. Therefore, we must put our faith in him. The Hebrew writer says it like this. He says that we must believe that he is. First of all, we must believe that God is God. We must believe that he is God. And secondly, he says, we must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. And let me tell you, you can't seek him like you go to church. I think I'll bag that up one more time. You, if you're going to diligently seek him, you can't seek him like you fellowship with your loved ones. If you're going to diligently seek him, you will always be on your post, always be in prayer, and always be praising the Lord. It brings us to the text where the God of the Israelites, Our God, we know he's the God of the Israelites because the writer used the capitalized word, the whole word, Lord, is capitalized. A capital L, a capital O, a capital D. He is the self-existing God. He is the almighty God. He is the God that delivers us from all of our being. He is the God that wasn't elected God. He wasn't selected as God. He wasn't voted in as God. He always is God and he always has been God. He always will be God. He is the Lord that we ought to praise. You see, God reminds them in in, in Psalm number 95 that that I'm the one who scooped the earth and made dry ground. He, He reminds them that I have the seed in my very own hands. He reminded them when you were wandering through the wilderness in a contrary way, I was the one that kept you. And if you remember Israel, I allowed you to go 40 years and not a hole got in your shoes. I allowed you, Israel, to go for 40 years, and now you got an attitude with me, and you didn't have to change clothes. I'm the one, Israel, that allowed you to walk through the wilderness, and all those who were not faith walkers, but here you are, Caleb, and here you are, Joshua, because you had a great report, and because you trusted in God, here you are, you will walk in to the promised land. How does it? How does it apply to us? Have the last five weeks caused you to turn your head on God? Have the last five weeks caused you to doubt God? Let me tell you, it's a devastating thing to get a call from from those who are about to do hydroponics on us on a Saturday. Says, hey, there's no electricity here. And I say, well, they, they're pulling the poles down the street. And sooner or later, they'll have the electricity uh, uh, back up. And then a funeral was supposed to be here that Friday. I walk around the building and I, 
I see the panel box door off. And I look in it and immediately I know that someone has stolen not just some of the electricity, but they took it off. There's one thing I have to say about them. If you're going to do anything, don't do it half stocked. I mean, don't just do it halfway. I mean, they stole it all. Someone, someone asked the question, well, don't you have cameras? Yeah, but if you have a camera, if you have the internet, and, and, then, and then they take it all, all means all. It reminds me that, that we all have sinned. We all have fallen short. It didn't say y'all have sinned. It didn't say y'all have fallen short. It said we all. So they took all the electricity. Not only that, the team that was chosen is supposed to have been qualified. And I know that it only takes a few hours to get it up and running. I, I, I know. I know it only takes a few hours to to pull 200 more feet of wire in the ground. And I know you got to get your stuff together. You got to plan it right. You got to lay it out right. And then center point energy, the one that which we pay our bills, <laughs> did not keep their appointment for five times. And every time they reneged on their appointment, we went into a weekend. And then they declared that, that we, don't, we, don't, we don't work on commercial stuff on the weekend. But on the weekend, on a Sunday, they'll come out and put a red tag because nobody's here to receive them. But this is the group that doesn't work on This is the group that you pay your electricity to. We can't call on L, uh, HP, HL and P anymore. It's center point that calls the shot. Five times. They're supposed to show up five times. And they didn't show up any time. And the congregation at the New Beginning Church looking at me like, Pastor David, what are you doing wrong? They look at me like they look at the man in John chapter 9 where he was born blind. And, and you want to know who have sinned. Have you sinned? It's never my mom and my daddy. Pastor David, what sin are you caught up in? That every week we get to the same point where we think we're going in. And let me tell you, those of you who weren't engaged, those of you who, who were not a part those of you who, who didn't listen very clearly, you have no clue, no idea what your pastor has gone through. I mean, calling the light company, then calling Center Point, then calling the light company. Light company says that Center Point is here to do this, and Center Point says that, oh, the, the electricity has been cut off. In the midst of it all, we still have to praise the Lord. Let me commend those of you who traveled across from the southeast side of town to the west side of town to, to praise the Lord in the gym. And, and every time we got there, the echo was bouncing off the wall. And, and let me just share, you showed up and you praised the Lord anyhow. You see, it's when you're in trouble that God allows us to praise the Lord anyhow. It's when things are not going well for us that, that God depends on us to praise the Lord anyhow. It's not in the good times, Dr. King says, it's not in the good times that a measure of a man is shown. It's when the bad times strike that you really know a measure of a man. So let me thank you, New Beginning Church. Let me thank you for coming and singing. Thank you for, for coming and being a part. Thank you for, for showing up. Thank you for, for being there, even though it wasn't in the cushioned seats that you sit in. Even though the air wasn't blowing like it's blowing now. Even though the thermostat wasn't able to regulate. Even if it's, it's cold the next minute, it's too hot the next minute, cold the next minute. Let me tell you, thank you for showing up. It's a word of encouragement to all of your brothers and your sisters, as well as your pastor, that you're still on the team. Let me tell you, if you are a team player, you are able to go through the bad times. Because when the team loses, we all lose. So we ought to praise the Lord in the midst of it. And I think even while we were at home worshiping, you ought to praise the Lord anyhow. In the text, the writer says, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. The King James, the King James Version would say, praise the Lord, all you nations. What he's saying is everybody who has the same culture ought to praise the Lord. <laughs> 
Thank God for the children that's of a different culture. Thank God. Why don't we thank God for the children that's of a different culture? But the text says every culture, every nation, every Gentile ought to praise the Lord. What he's saying, what he's saying right here is that the unsaved ought to praise the Lord. And certainly the saved ought to praise the Lord. The, the uncommitted ought to praise the Lord because he is the Lord, you know. Without him, there is nothing that exists. Let me tell you, when you look at what you have, if you're sitting in a chair that's made of wood, the man made the chair, but God made the wood. If you got furniture that you sit on at the house, man made the fabric, but God made the cotton. If you look at, look at what has taken place in the midst of all that we've gone through, if you're sitting on the metal, God created the metal. You see, what God has allowed us to do is claim inventions, claim creations, but the only creator we know is God himself. Forget about the Big Bang Theory. Forget about coming from an uh, ape. And forget about evolution. The God we serve is a God, the creator. He's the God of the universe. He is the one that when a sparrow falls to the ground, he already knows it before it happens. Every blade of grass that gets chopped down, God already knows it. That's the Lord that we serve. And who would not serve and who would not praise the Lord like that? The, the, the psalmist says, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, all you nations, all you generations. And then he says, Lord. This word Lord means to praise him. This word Lord means to show forth an expression of approval. You know, let me just tell you, there are certain things you say in church that is church talk. And, and you ought not say the same thing in the world because it's not worldly talk. There are some things that I would say in the world that I wouldn't say at the church because that is worldly talk. And when you get to church, you ought to have church talk. I, I remember my daughter used to run up and down the field, up and down the court, playing basketball, and they would begin to make mistakes. And I would stand up in the bleachers with a loud voice and say, you have to want it, you have to want it, you have to want it. I wouldn't say that at church. Because I'm trying to motivate them. I'm trying to push them to, to go after it, to stop making mistakes and to, and to keep battling for every point that they could possibly get. But when it comes to church, when it comes to worshiping the Lord, when, and I know you can worship him in your car. I, I understand that you can worship him at home. I understand you can worship him walking down the street. But let me tell you, the Hebrew writer says, when we get together, we ought to sure enough praise the Lord. The, 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 the proverb writer, the rise writer in Proverbs says it like this. Iron ought to sharpen iron. And as iron sharpens iron, so is one brother and sister to the other. So we are glad we're here today. Are you glad you're here today? Are you glad you're sitting where you sit? Are you glad you're able to raise your hands today? And the old folk back home would say like this. Mama may have. Daddy may have. But God blessed the child with his own. And God has placed us one more time to sit in our own. And for that, I praise him. For that, I thank him. For that, I worship him. So when he says, lost him, he's meaning to praise God with approval. He means to praise God with admiration. Let me tell you, some people are so amazed with entertainers, they rush to get their autographs and some entertainers will push you away and some entertainers will disappoint little children, but we are still at the point where we are admiring them. We, we want to get their autograph. Let me just share with you, the God that we serve is worthy of admiring. Because there is none like him. And, and regardless of what you're going through, you need to hang on to God. Because God has the answer that you won't get anywhere else. Matter of fact, when you leave home, you can't afford to leave home without him. When you wake up in the morning, you can't afford to not admire him. You cannot afford not to praise him. Every day of your life, you got to praise the Lord for who he is and what he's already done. The psalmist, the psalmist write this psalm 
after they had come through the wilderness and they had seen God at work. And some of you in the room have seen God at work. You've seen God take you through some things and, and God has delivered you from some things. And if, if you're Mr. or Mrs. Goody Two-Shoe and, and you've never been through anything, just keep waking up in the morning. <laughs> Just keep saying good morning to the slop job. Just keep waking up in the morning because sooner or later you're going to have some stuff that you're going through that you can't deal with on your own. Amen. Let me tell you, let me tell you, the doctor has a way of bringing you into reality. You can really be sitting on top of the world and wake up in the morning and the world is on top of you. And you, can, you can go to bed you can go to bed and you have all you need and you have all you ever prayed for but early in the morning before the rooster can crow trouble can hit and, and it will hit and devastate you let me tell you if I had not been in the Lord I not only could have cussed but I could have done some ambushing I could have I could have hid in the bushes I could have waited and, and sit there and, and waited things out. I, I could have driven over when I saw it. I could have driven over and, and gotten here just in time. But let me tell you, no one's life is worthy of the stuff we have. Because what we have, God has blessed us with it. And the same God that has blessed us with what we have, he will bless us with some more. Because he's that kind. He's that kind of God. He's the kind of God we ought to. Praise. We, it says, praise him, all you people. He says, if you're not going through, praise him. If you're about to go through, praise him. If you're coming out, praise him. It didn't say certain people ought to praise him. It didn't say because you drive what you drive and, and ride where you want to ride and go where you want to go and a part of this club and, and that fraternity and this organization you ought to praise him. It said praise him all you people because he is the sheep shepherd and he's the one who keeps the sheep. We are the sheep of his pastor and we ought to praise him because the shepherd takes care of us. You can't depend on your job, certainly not now. You can't depend, can't depend on your job because they just don't treat folk like they used to. You couldn't depend on them then, but at least they painted a picture like you could depend on them. Now we live in a right to work state, and that means, and you know, the, the right to work is misleading, really. It says you got a right to work, but what it really means is they can let you go just by the way you look. And, and now, those of you who are in my ethnic group, you can't wear your hair a certain way because they'll let you go because of your hairstyle. They'll let you go because of your color. They'll let you go because you say something. They'll let you go because you won't do wrong. Let me tell you, you have to depend on God and pray. Praise him, all you people. And praise is not only an expression of approval. Not only is it an expression of admiration. It is also an expression of gratitude. Let me tell you today, I don't even have to ask you. Are you thankful to be here? First of all, first of all, first of all, you thankful that God has woke has awakened you this morning. You, you you thankful because God woke you up this morning because He didn't do it because you've been so good. He didn't do it because you've been so holy. He didn't do it because you deserved it. He did it because He's merciful. He is God. Secondly, you're glad to be here because you're glad to be at home. Yesterday I came by and I met with the church members that meet here on Saturday. And every member that I walked into, every person I bumped into on the inside as well as on the outside, they said, oh, we're just so thankful to be here. They got through. They got finished. We're going from pillar to post. They didn't, they didn't admire anywhere they went. They were just thankful to be here. And it's not because we had good electricians. And I can tell you about that in private. It's not because they had their business straight. It's because of God's mercy and God's grace that kept us. It says all the people ought to praise him. It, it, it talks about the fact that 
God is not concerned about your past life. He's not concerned about what you've been through and, and how parents treated you. He, he's really not concerned about uh, how you have PSD or PTSD or, or, or PDD. And he's not concerned about those things. He's concerned that as you go through those things, you ought to praise him, all you people. The next, next part of that verse says, not only should we praise him, all you people, he, here he deals with the saints. He deals with those who who love him. Those who have committed their ways to him. He says all you people ought to praise him. You see when he first says. In verse 1. He first says. Praise you all my all his people. He's saying to us. Uh, first of all. The Gentiles are unsaved. Then when he says all you people. He's saying those who know him. And those who love him. And if you know him. And you love him. You ought to show some signs. You know, one of the frustrating things to me when I go to visit the church, because I, I know the New Beginning Church has been taught really well of, of what they ought to do when God uh, is on the scene. And when you think about God and, and what God has already done, we already know that we ought to praise him. We already know that regardless of our personalities, whether we are introvert or extrovert, we ought to praise him. And brothers ought not be so smooth, cool, calm, and collected in the service because we didn't come to be cool, cool, calm, and collected in the service. We've come to give our praises, our honor, our glory to the almighty God. He is the one who has blessed us one more again to be who we are, to be where we are, and to be blessed by what we're going through. And let me tell you, if you think the things that you're going through are so bad, all you got to do is look around. All you have to do is talk to one person. You don't have to, you don't have to set an appointment. You don't have to know what they're going through. Just talk to one person. One, one, just talk to one person. You don't have to know who the person is. You don't have to know their background. Just talk to one person. And, and you will thank God for what you're going through. Because if it had not been for God on your side, you, it could have been you. I remember Robert. I won't call Robert for a name. I remember Robert. Robert used to travel all over the fourth state uh, land and country. He was a boxer and he was doing good. He was short, but he was a power puncher and he was quick with his hands. And, and we used to watch him in practice and Robert used to knock him out and put him down. And, and all of us who, who was in the weight class, we really, we really didn't want to box with Robert. But now when I go home, Robert is trembling down the street. He's shaking his head like he has Parson. He is walking and he doesn't remember me even from the other day. It's because Robert got hold to some bad stuff. And every time I see Robert, I say, thank you, Lord. And I pray with him and I pray for him. But I realize one thing, Sister Brown, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, Somebody could have snipped something in my drink. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, somebody could have shot something in my vein. If it had not been for the Lord and his mercy, there I go just like Robert. He says, praise the Lord, all you people. Verse 2, and I promised you I would preach it all. And when I said preach it all, some of y'all said, all right, preach it all. And then when you looked at it, Sister Whitlock started doing this. She said, that man there, he's something else. <laughs> oh, Lord, here he goes again. Verse 2 says, for his merciful kindness is great toward us. What the psalmist is saying here is, we deserve to be cut off. It doesn't matter whether you go to Sunday school or Bible study or grew up in church or not. You are not good enough to be here. It doesn't matter if your daddy, your granddaddy was the chairman of deacons and, and he could really, really call on the Lord. Whatever you're going through, you don't deserve to be here. It does not matter if you grew up and you know the Bible from killer to killer. You'll get that when you get home or access to Henry. She'll tell you. It doesn't matter if you know the Bible from killer to killer. God is still merciful to you. 
You don't deserve what you're getting. Matter of fact, we deserve death. We deserve to be cut off. We deserve not to walk anymore. We, we deserve the last time we had an accident, we could have been maimed for life. But God's mercy and God's grace found a way to bless us. And for that, we ought to praise the Lord. For his merciful kindness is great toward us. His mercy and kindness is great. His merciful kindness is great toward us. He is great. Let me tell you, when you talk about mercy, you, you deserve bad stuff to happen to you. You deserve, you know, I pray that the Lord does not allow me to be desensitized to people. I, but, but when I watch the news now, and somebody got killed doing a home invasion, I'm just confessing. I, I just want to confess this. The, th the thing I want to know right away, Brother Miles, I want to know, was it the homeowner or the burglar? Uh -huh. I, I, I pray that, that, that the I, I, Sister Richard, I did not get to the point where I'm desensitized so much so until I, real, I, I stop realizing that every human has life, but I do know that every human do not deserve life. And there are people walking around who will not work, but they take stuff. And we as homeowners, we are sick and tired of being sick and tired of working all day and all night to receive what we have. And then some rascal that will not work come and take it. I'm just praying for me. I don't know if you need to pray for you, but I'm praying for me. Lord, don't let my heart get so hard until I say good, until I say bless the Lord, until I say praise God that the right person got killed. I'm, I'm just praying for me. I'm just... I'm just praying, I'm just praying, Lord, that, that I don't get so desensitized to human life until I rejoice when the burglar get taken out. I know, I know the word, the word, and, and, and right, I was going to preach Luke chapter 6 today, but I thought you wanted to hear me preach all of this instead. So, so I was going to preach Luke chapter 6, and Luke chapter 6 talks about loving your enemies and, and blessing those who curse you and, and bless those who despitefully use you and, and taking it. That's some hard saying that Jesus is giving. And Sister Richard already shaking her head and said, Jesus can go on down the road with that kind of can on. I pray for me and you pray for me that my heart doesn't become so hardened until I rejoice when the right person is taken out because it is somebody's child and somebody's mama, somebody's brother and then there are grown men who got children at home that ought to be taking care of their children and they snooping around somebody else's house now these little bitty children are without a dad and without a mama and then one thing about it, they think they deserve your stuff they think, they, they have come to the conclusion the devil has taken over their minds and clouded their mind until they got a reason for taking your stuff they got a reason. They got a reason. Uh, the, woman, the woman was at, at work. She was at work minding her own business. Her alarm goes off on her phone. She looks at her, she looks at her cameras, and she sees this guy breaking in her house. So she leaves home, and she arms herself on the way there. All right. And when she walks around the house, she meets the guy, and they look at each other eye to eye. Uh -huh. Instead of him running away, he launches at her. And the rest was history. When the camera showed up and they put the camera in his female cousin's face and, and asked the cousin what did she think about this awful killing? She says, well, people ought to know he got to get his money from somewhere. So they have come to the conclusion Sister Davis, Davis, they've come to the conclusion that your stuff ought to be their stuff. And they've come to the conclusion that when they come to your house and they take your stuff, you ought to just let them have it. I'm telling you to pray for me, sister in law. I'm telling you, sister in law, to pray for me. Sister Trejo, pray for me. 
Pray for me that I don't become so bitter. I don't become so desensitized. I said, pray, pray for me. Pray for me because I just believe we've worked hard the last 40 years. 40 years for her, 40 years for me. That's 80 years of working hard for whatever we have. And guess what? I want it when I show back up. Pray for me that I don't praise the Lord. When what I call the right person is taken out. Because I have to become like God. Verse number two says this is what God is. This is who God is. And this is what God does. Verse number two says, for his merciful kindness is great toward us. His merciful kindness is great toward us. I want to be merciful. I want to be kind. I want to be loving. I want to be understanding, Brother Whitlock. I, I want to understand, but I just can't understand when somebody taking my stuff. <laughs> Brother Dixon, I'm praying. First of all, I'm praying, Lord, don't let me ever have to and don't let them ever have to. Secondly, I'm praying, Lord, give me a heart like you. Uh-huh. Hazel and I'm praying that God gives me a heart like God. A merciful heart. A heart that can take some stuff and be long-suffering with some stuff. And since I'm confessing right now, Sister Henry, let me just let you know, I'm not there yet. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, this is my confession day. I'm not, Sister O'Neill, I want to be there. Sister O'Neill, I'm I'm praying about being there. I, I, I really, I even struggle to be there. I want to have the spirit of God, but I confess today, I'm not there yet. And because, and now I can use the same excuse you use. When you don't do what God said to do. When you don't show up when you're supposed to show up. When you don't do what you're supposed to do. I can use the same excuse you, uh, God is still working on me. And since God is still working on me, go ahead and pray for me. But I do have a scripture in my I do have a scripture in my arsenal that, that lets me know that in order to, to spoil the strong man house, you have to first get rid of the strong man. And I'm just want to let you know, Sister Davis is not the strong man in the house. But there is one that God has placed there for protection of that house and protection of that person and protection of everybody that comes by. He's a strong man. And the devil has to take out the strong man in order to spoil the house. In the meantime, I continue to pray. I continue to ask God for mercy. He says, for his merciful kindness is great toward us. My next point to you today is, The reason why I want mercy and kindness is because God has been merciful and kind to me. Let me tell you, if I'm going to testify, I might as well tell the whole story. I have not been all that God wants me to be. God is still working on me, and there are times that I really don't want God. Oh, I'm I'm revealing myself. I really don't want to hear and see how God is working on me. Matter of fact, I'm like the clay, and God is working on me, and every now and then, God has to take the same clay that he just made in the midst of it being on the wheel. It gets marred. It gets scarred. It gets some problems and some defects. And in the midst of it working on me, I have to be crumbled up one more time. And God has to reshape me, has to remake me. And I'm the one testifying this morning, but if you're going to give your testimony, you have to admit also, God is not through with you yet, and every now and then, you do some things that God is not pleased with. But God has been merciful to me. He's kept me in spite of me. He's kept kept me in spite of me going my own way. And, and, And let me tell you, I talk about young folk crawling up Fool's Hill. Let me tell you, I know that hill really well. 
I know where the hill is located. I, I know where the hill is calling my attention because I have climbed up fool's hill. Even while I was a preacher, even while I was your pastor, I've been climbing up fool's hill. But God has been merciful and kind toward me. So I want to be like God. I want to be merciful. I want to be kind toward others. Finally, he says, in the truth of the Lord, and do it forever. We don't have a temporary God. We have an everlasting God. We have a God who blesses us in spite of us. He is the only true and living God. He is God that makes things happen when we are asleep. Yet last night while the robbers were robbing, the thieves were stealing. Burglars were breaking in. This God kept us. While doctors were pronouncing folk dead. This God kept us. While people were going around taking your catalytic converter. God kept us. Because guess what? If you confront them, they're already equipped to take you out. And let me tell you, your life is not, not your life it, your, your catalytic converter, your life is better, is, is stronger, your life is, is better, and your life is worth more than a catalytic converter. Your life is worth more than your tailgate on your truck. My life is worth more than 2,800 feet. Of copper they pulled out of the ground. My, my life is better. My life is worth more than that. But it's one thing that I do. Because God is working on me. I, I want God to, to bother them by way of the Holy Spirit. I want God to not let them sleep until they come face to face with him. I want God to make them confess in the name of Jesus the Christ that they messed up and they've shut down a church for almost six weeks. I want God to entertain them to the point that they don't get any rest until they turn their faces toward God. Until, you know, somebody said the other day, there's a special place in hell for folk that destroy church stuff. I like to believe there's a special place in heaven. If we do our job and reach souls for Christ, and you never know who can be reached by your testimony. In the meantime, we're going to praise God because his truth exists from now on. We're going to praise God because God is who he is and he will continue to be who he is. Thank God that I'm not God. Thank God that you're not God. What would it be like if you were God? Matter of fact, if you were God, I wouldn't be standing here right now. If I was God, I wouldn't be standing here right now. It's because of God's mercy, God's grace, God's kindness that he's given us another chance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Finally, he says, he says, praise the Lord. He says, give forth an expression of approval to the Lord. Now the psalmist in verses 1 and 2 is simply eulogizing the Lord. When we talk about praising God, he's giving God God's credit. He is eulogizing the Lord. You see, when we go to funerals, we think the preacher's message is the eulogy. The preacher's message can tie into the eulogy, but the person that stands up and talks down there and talk about the goodness of that person and how much that person means to the community and all the great things they've done, that's the eulogy. They are speaking well of the person. Now the psalmist today is eulogizing God, and God is not dead. He ought to still be eulogized. The psalmist today is talking good about God. And let me tell you, stop your gossiping and turn your face toward God. Don't talk about people. Talk about God. If you're going somewhere, you need to eulogize God. Talk about the goodness of God. Talk about what he's done for you. Talk about how he blessed you. I can tell the story today that when the doctors walk in the room and they fold up their napkin and fold their silverware up and tell you to take them home, they won't make it to the morning. I can testify today that God is a doctor in a sick room. I can testify today that God, God is a lawyer in a courtroom. I've been there before and I was looking at 10 years or so but God blessed me. He kept me and he blessed me to get out of there. I can, I can testify today that he is a deliverer from trouble. I've been in trouble. Let me tell you boy 
boy and girl, I have not always been where I am. But the God we serve, the God that we bless, the God we pray, he's watched over me and he's kept me. Press, Caleb, you're on your way to college. Mom and daddy won't be there. You're getting ready to be introduced to a whole lot of stuff. Women like never before. Men like never before. People living their ways the way they want to live. We ought to be praying when we send children off to college that they either come back the way they left or they come back better. Because college campus is a modern day Corinthian where folk are doing anything, drinking anything, shooting up everything. And we want our children to come back with stable minds like, we, like they had when they left us. And check this out. It doesn't matter if you're going 200 miles away around the corner. The same stuff is there that's over there. We think if we send them to a country school, it's going to be all right. We think we, if we send them to a bilingual school, it's going to be all right. We think if we send them to our culture, it's going to be all right. We think that if we send them to a multicultural school, it's going to be all right. It's going to take every child to make sure they make up their mind that they go going to school to get an education, get out of there and get a job. I, I was appalled. I was I was amazed. I was a pe- I was amazed. My, my, my first college was a junior college. My first college was a junior college. My first college was a, a two-year college. And I, I had one of my classmates come to me after graduation. I mean two years. Came to me after graduation and he said, man, you went ahead and took care of business. I said, man, it wasn't for two years. <laughs> What he was saying to me was, you took care of business, and I chose not to take care of business. Let me tell you, when you go off to college, go there to take care of business, get your business straight, do what you can do, and put forth every effort you can so God can be glorified. God is walking around in you. God is living in you. God is dwelling in you. And as God walks in you, he's expecting you to be a good godly example for other people to see. And he expects you to praise him. Finally, the text says, praise the Lord. How do we praise him? The psalmist says in Psalm 100 that we ought to praise him with the symbol. We ought to praise him with the high sounding symbol. We ought to praise him on the string instruments. We ought to praise him early in the morning. We ought to praise him because of the firmaments of the sky. We ought to praise him because of water that falls from the sky. We ought to praise him because of the grass that grows. We ought to praise him because of the trees. Let me tell you, every creature in this world Praise the Lord every morning, other than those who have sense enough to praise him. The dog praises him. The moose praises him. The trees praises him. The stars praises him. Now, don't you let other things praise you. Jesus says that if these don't cry out, the rocks will cry out. So I'm here to tell you, the rocks and the stones will praise the Lord. Come on, join me today. We're praising him. Thanking him for what he's already done. He blessed us. He's rescued us. He's delivered us. Oh, he made sure that our soul was anchored in the Lord. He did it over 2,000 years ago. My Lord and my God, Jesus the Christ, he died on a skull hill called Calvary. That's enough to praise him. It was Good Friday. That's enough to praise him. They laid him in a bar of tomb. That's enough to praise him. All of that third day morning, he rose with all power. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We ought to praise him. We ought to thank him. We ought to approve him. We ought to express him. And we ought to praise the Lord. Is anybody here? No, you ought to praise him. Is there anybody here that ought to praise the Lord? The Bible says we ought to praise him by the waving of our hands. The Bible says we ought to praise him by lifting our hands. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If I don't see you anymore, just come on around heaven's gate. I will be there with the four beastly creatures, lifting my hands, praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You can't leave home without your praise. 
Every time, every time, every time, every time I walk down a peanut butter aisle, I just stop for a moment. Every time I walk down the peanut butter in the jelly aisle, I stop for a moment. And I respect this. I reflect on 1985 when I was living in a one-bedroom apartment and I didn't have lights on. And I couldn't call mom and daddy because the only thing they're going to say is come on back home. Well, mama would say come home. Daddy said figure it out. <laughs> I, I had a one-bedroom apartment. It was black dark. I was too embarrassed to walk in at night because I knew that I didn't have lights. So I had a flashlight. And I walk in, I turn on the flashlight. I would bathe to a flashlight. I would say my prayers to a flashlight. I would get in bed by way of flashlight. I, and they didn't have phones that, put, that came on. So I had a wind up clock for my alarm. And I would twist my clock up. And I would set it to that AM time. And then I would get asleep. And then when I'd get up in the morning, I would look at the peanut butter. And that's all I had. A peanut butter. I didn't, I didn't, didn't have any bread. And now when I'm on my cycling trip, right before I leave, I take a scoop of peanut butter. I need to get my protein, I need protein in. I take a scoop of peanut butter. I gulp it down. But now when I go to the peanut butter aisle in Provost, now when I go to Randall's, and I happen to walk around the peanut butter aisle, and I look at the peanut butter, and I realize now that God has blessed me. Not only has he blessed me to buy peanut butter, I can buy the peanut butter in the jelly now. I thank God for who he is and what he's already done. And not only can I buy what I want, I can give what I need. And what I don't have, I can bless God because he's going to bring somebody else to give it to me. Who wouldn't pray to God like that? We got to teach our children to praise him. We have to praise him. We have to honor him. We have to glorify him. So God is good, and he's good all the time. The same God that has blessed us to come into this place, he's going to keep our hearts. He's going to keep our minds in the midst. If you didn't die from COVID-19, you ought to praise the Lord. If you avoided cancer, you ought to praise the Lord. If you got healed from cancer, you ought to praise the Lord. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. He's given us a reason to praise the Lord. In your good times and your bad times, thank God for who he is and what he's already done. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to try Jesus. He is a righteous Lamb of God. If you tried everybody else, you tried everything else. I recommend that you try Jesus. He's a burden bearer. He's a heavy load sharer. He's a company keeper. He is Jesus of Christ. The Lamb of God. The door is open. Will you come? If you never tried Jesus, this is your moment. This is your opportunity to try Jesus. Just bow your head with me and if you want to invite Jesus Christ into your life, just repeat after me in this short, this brief, this short, this short moment and ask Jesus into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 
We believe if you prayed this prayer honestly, believing that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for your sin, you are saved, you are born again, you're on your way to heaven when you die. And there are others of us who are struggling. I, I've given you my testimony and my struggles. I want to pray for those of you who are struggling. Lord, we come now as strugglers. We bring our burdens before you. Deliver us from trouble. Deliver us from the wiles of the devil. Lord, deliver us from sin and shame. Bless us, Lord, to look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Bless us to trust you. Bless us to call upon you. Bless us to praise you. Lord, we ask you to keep the glory. All honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. I want to use this time to pray for two people that I know are, are sick and need our prayers. And they are depending on us to lift them. First of all, my daughter Megan, we want to lift, lift her in prayer for her health. And then I know everybody in the room has noticed a person missing that's usually a person that's very much up front and make a difference in our worship service. We want to lift up Deacon Raymond Asher before the Lord. Will you join me? Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come lifting Megan, come lifting Deacon Alfred. We call on you today, Father God, for you're the only one who can do it. We ask you to be their doctors. Be their strength. Be their encouragement. Heal their bodies. Strengthen as only you can. Touch where the need is. Touch as only you can. Bless, Lord. Bless them even right now to feel your presence. Bless them to see your commitment. We know you as a great physician. God, we ask you to heal. We ask you to amaze the doctors. We ask you to touch as you touch the woman with this your blood. We ask you to touch, Father God, as you touch the man and the, that was blind. We ask you to heal, Father God, strengthen, encourage, and deliver that they will rise again and tell the people that the Lord we serve is a good God. Lord, we trust you. Lord, we bless you. And we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord. It is time to give to the Lord. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. And you will be served. For those of you who are giving online, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesusandyahoo.com, lifting.jesusandyahoo.com, lifting.jesusandyahoo.com. If you want to mail in your gifts, you can do so by mailing it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Father God, we thank you for this privilege of giving. We ask you to bless every giver and bless every gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to ask this side to stand. My left, your right, stand and follow first impressions from the rear to the front. 
to bring forth the Lord's tithes offering and sacrificial gifts. Unto the Lord, oh, he is good. He is. Yes, he is good. More than mine. Yep, thanks. Unto the Lord, More oh, he is. is good. He is. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy. 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 For he is good. He is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. Unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. For he is good. Yes, he is good. We thank you for every person. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Oh, I'll well, just side stand. Come on. For he is worthy. Brother Urban, come on with that money, brother. Brother Urban, bring that money, brother Urban. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy. For he is good. He is. Yes, he is good. Father God, we thank you now for the other three fourths. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I want, to, I want to thank those who have joined us by way of broadcast. Thank you for joining us. Uh, why don't you remain seated? I want to talk to us as a family later. Let us go to God and pray. I got some more stuff going on. So we love, come on here, Sister Davis. Y'all got to tell me. I'm almost 60. And I moved, I moved this so I could get them up there. Okay. That's why I did that. All right. Uh, I have some presentations to make, and I am just so thankful for the WeTe organization, which the family is past is the sister Parity Shivers, and that's the Women in Power Training Institute. On yesterday, they had their 15th anniversary for celebrating her organization. The students for college. Yesterday, they gave away uh, 10. But before that, they presented those scholarships, we had a part of Turning Hearts Music Ensemble to perform for the first time since 2019. They came to the three, one. to honor them. And it says, we uh, 2022 Youth Participation Award presented to the Malo children for your participating participation and performance in the 15th Annual Scholarship uh, Banquet. So would you come up here and receive? First we have Kevin Malo. And the children want to give them money too. So we have Kevin. And she also giving them a shirt. So thank you, Kevin. Congratulations. Daniel, here's Daniel, and here's your shirt, what? and then we've got their big Bless sister, all right, all right, all right. All right. we got all the right. gentle boy in training, here you go, all right, thank you, Malos, keep practicing, you can go back to your seat now, um, and we have three students that uh, were are graduating this year or did graduate and on their way to college. 
And that's Xavier, Caleb, and Anaya. And they all three will be receiving a $500. And we want them to use that money. Come on up. Xavier, these are the, the boys that um, uh, had turning hearts to be on the map. They made turning hearts. Stand over these here. Two boys. Stand, stand over here. Stand over here. All right. So first we have uh, Xavier, and they worked the banquet on yesterday. They were servers. Xavier, five hundred dollars. Caleb, five hundred dollars. Y'all remember Caleb when he did his little speech in kindergarten? Yes, I did. He said, "I believe these boys have just grown up, and we want you to make sure that you continue to make us proud in college. And the next four years, we want you to come back." with great things to tell us. So to God be the glory. Thank you so much. All right. And also, our pastor, Pastor Dr. Matthew Davis, he received the Weedy Visionary Leadership Award on yesterday. So thank you, Pastor Davis. You're welcome. And yours truly, Carolyn Davis, received the Youth Engagement Award and also Women of Distinction Award. So we wanted to thank Carolyn for always recognizing people who are doing things in the community and always encouraging the children to do that very thing. So thank you. Amen. Sister Cora Woods. Look at that, I remember. Sister Cora Woods. Amen. To the Lord, for he is good, for he is good. Johnny Woods, yeah. Uh, good afternoon. It's almost afternoon. Um, last week was Father's Day, and please, fathers, don't think we forgot you. We were under the weather. So <laughs> I did have y'all in the gift. So to all the fathers, it says, Happy Father's Day. Father's Day, a day of honor for those men who influences last a lifetime. I lost my dad in 2001, and I still remember things that he said to me. I guess that's why I say he worked for 42 years. Hmm. Wishing you a happy Father's Day that brings you all the best, warmest smile, lots of love, and special happiness. I pray that you had a great day, and I have a gift for each one of you all. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so they're going to get it now or what? They're going to get it now. Happy Father's Day. Amen. Happy Father's Day. Means much when you have men in the church. Amen. Amen. Means much when men are fathers. Amen. I always say it teach it takes a man to teach a boy how to be a man. And it takes a man to teach a girl what what to expect in another man. Amen. Amen. Okay, I remember another one, Sister Hughes is going to make the final. Amen. I'm going to ask Sister Carolyn Davis if she could come and stand over there where uh, Sister Cora was standing. Thank you. Give her the microphone, too. What? She'll be here in a few minutes. <coughs> Amen. I thought uh, you all were looking forward to it, but I realized it was her birthday. And so um, what I did, I believe the song. Uh, and so I asked Pastor Davis to see if I could sing it to her. And so y'all listen to me, and then when I tell you to come in, then y'all be ready to come in. Amen. Uh, and the name of the song, Sister Davis, is You're Still Here. Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> oh, 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 happy birthday to you. Come on, come on. Oh, 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 in the Lord. See you through, listen. Oh, 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 happy 
Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you. We honor you. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. God, we thank you that you're the only true and living God. We thank you, Father, for blessing us and keeping us. Lord, we ask you, Father, to continue to walk with us. We thank you for every man, every father. We thank you for Sister Davis. We thank you for Sister Hughes. We thank you for every child. We thank you for every person. Lord, we ask you to bless us as we leave this place, that you will always walk with us. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him, the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. And those